let's take a look at 6.2 question 10 so here question 10 says find power series solutions which is the second derivative of y minus x y prime plus 2y equal to 0 it says around x equal to 0 so since x equal to 0 is an ordinary point it means that the general solution has formula sum cn x to the n and start from zero to infinity. Again, this is c sub zero plus c sub one x plus c sub two x squared plus c sub three x cubed plus the rest of the terms. Our job is to identify what is the relation between these coefficients. To do that, we need to take the first derivative, we need to take the second derivative and then plug them in here. So, the first derivative becomes the sum cn n x to n minus one and start from one to infinity and the second derivative becomes sum cn times n n minus one x to n minus two and n starts from two to infinity. Let's plug those in here. We get the sum cn n n minus one x to n minus two and start from two to infinity minus x times y prime, which is the sum cn n x to n minus one and start from one to infinity plus two y. But what is y? y is the sum cn x to the n and start from zero to infinity. And on the right hand side, it is equal to zero. So let me erase this part of the board so we have enough space. Very well. So now, as you can see, you have different indexes and different exponents, even though if you just multiply this by x, you get x to the n, but here you have different indexes and the, in the, the exponents are the same, but you have to make some adjustments for the index indices and then for the exponents. So what are we going to do? By just trying to see how it works, there is no direct way to solve these types of problems. So what are we going to do? We're going to try our best to figure out what is the best adjustment and shifts for these indices to make the exponents to be the same? So first of all, let us see. If I just make some change, like if I use k to be n minus 2, I can make the index starting at 0 and the exponent becomes So let me do this first. This guy becomes the sum k starts from zero to infinity c n is k plus two times k plus two and if i plug in k plus two here plus two minus one becomes k plus one x to power k so this is for the first power series this is the adjustment that i'm going to use so for this one i'm going to use k equals to n k equals to n and the same here. So then I'm going to rewrite some of the terms and check to see how I can make these all starting from the same index so I can combine them. So let's see, this guy becomes minus the sum CK, K starts from one to infinity times K X to the K plus two sum CK X to the K equal to zero. Very well. So let's see. For this, this guy, I'm going to write the first term. If I write the first term to make everything starting at one, this becomes like C2 times two times one X to the zero plus the sum K start from one to infinity CK plus two, K plus two, k plus one, x to the k minus, now I have k starts at one, one to infinity, I'm just copying down this guy here, ckk, x to the k, and here, let me just write down the first term, two c sub zero, x to power zero plus two, the sum ck, x to the k equal to zero, now k starts from one to infinity, take a look at this, now, all of these indices starting from one and the exponents are also K. So you are allowed to combine these series. 
So this guy is 2c sub 2, and this guy is 2c sub 0, and plus the sum x to the k, k starts from 1 to infinity, and here you get ck plus 2 times k plus 2 times k plus 1 minus ck times k plus 2ck on the right hand side it is equal to zero so it means that this sum and this sum must be equal to zero so you get 2c2 plus 2c sub zero equal to zero and also at the same time you have well this relation minus ckk plus 2ck equal to zero so let's see what do they have it says c2 is equal to negative c sub zero the first one and this guy says ck plus 2 is equal to ck times 2 okay this is 2 minus k let's bring it to the other side you get 2 k minus 2 divided by k plus 2 times k plus 1. Now I need to find a relation between ci's. This guy gives me the following. Let me erase this part of the board. I need more space. We wrote down everything to try to get to this part. So, so far I have C2 equals to negative C sub zero and CK plus two equals to CK, K minus two divided by K plus two times K plus. Let's see. Let K be equals to, so if we plug in zero, we get the same relation. So if K is equal to one, what do we get? We get c sub 3 equals to c sub 1 times negative 1 divided by 3 times 2. And if k is equal to 2, c sub 4 becomes, well, here you have c sub 2 times 0 and divided by 4 times 3, which is 0. So c sub 4 is 0. What about if k is equal to 3? If k is equal to 3, c sub 5 becomes, well, here you have c sub 3 times 3 minus 2, which is 1, divided by 3 plus 2, 5 times 3 plus 1, which is 4. So this guy becomes c sub 3 divided by 4 times 5. But c sub 3 is equal to negative c sub 1 divided by 2 times 3, which is negative c sub 1 over two times three times four times five. If k is equal to four, c sub six becomes c sub four times two minus four minus two, which is just two, divided by, you get six times four plus one, which is five. Well, what do we have here? We know that c sub four is zero, so if you do the substitution, this guy becomes zero. Now, if k is equal to five, you get c sub 7, which is equal to, so here you have c sub 5 times 5 minus 2 divided by 5 plus 2, which is 7 times 5 plus 1. So you get 3 c sub 5 over 7 times 6. And c sub 5 is negative c sub 1. Negative 3 c sub 1 divided by 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7. And you can continue this process. If you continue this process, this is what we see. We see that, well, C sub four is equal to zero is equal to C sub six and the rest of them. Well, what do we see for C sub three? C sub three is equal to negative C sub one over three factorial. What about C sub 5? C sub 5 is equal to negative C sub 1 divided by 5 factorial. What about C sub 7? Negative 3 C sub 1 divided by 7 factorial. So now if you look at the general solution, you have C sub 0 plus C sub 1 
times x plus c sub 2, which is equal to negative c sub 0. So you get negative c sub 0 x squared plus c sub 3, which is negative c sub 1, divided by 6 x cubed plus the rest of the terms. We know that c sub um, 4 is equal to 0, so you have the rest of these coefficients. So it seems like our y becomes c sub 0, 1 minus x squared plus c sub 1 times x minus 1 over 6 x cubed plus the rest of the terms. So we found y1 and we found y2.